Hello everyone! Welcome back for a new course on the Dipler verbs. Today, we are beginning our exploration of the Dipler package. We are starting with the select verb, which is used either to keep or to drop variables. When you're doing your data wrangling, it's important to know which variables you want to keep and which variables you want to drop. So now, ready? Let's go! For this course, we have multiple learning objectives. Let's go over them one by one. So our first learning objective is that you can keep or drop columns using the select verb. Our second objective is that you can use a range of combinations of columns uh, through operators such as the colon, the exclamation mark, and the C function to select your variables. The third is that you can select columns based on patterns in their names using different helper functions such as start with, ends with, contains, and everything, which we will go over one by one. And then our last learning objective is that you can rename your columns using either the rename function or the select function. Now, you may wonder, what data are we going to use for this course? And the data we'll have the pleasure of using today is the Yaoundé COVID-19 data set. This data is a COVID-19 serological survey conducted in Yaoundé, Cameroon in the late 2020, and it covers how many people have been infected with COVID-19 in the region. So let's start by loading our data. As you can see here, we'll be reading in the CSV associated and our data has 971 columns and 37 variables, which is a lot. Each line corresponds to one patient survey, and there are some demographic, socio-economic, and COVID-related variables. The COVID-related variables being specifically, so that you become familiar with them, the um, IgG and IgM results. And these are antibody tests that were used and collected by the team that I'm about to show you. So this is real live world data of these courageous people that went out and gathered the data that you're about to, an to analyze. And it's very important to keep that in mind. So let's start with the heart of our lesson, introducing the select verb. And if you want a nice little illustration of what the verb looks like, this is are a select verb where you take certain of the columns and you keep only those. So the first way that you can use the select verb, you can select by name. So what does this look like concretely when we code it? If we take our Yaoundé data set and we want to select only the age column, then we write select age, simply the name of the column. If we look at this, it gives us only the age variable. The other option we have is that we can select a column by its position. So how does this translate into code? Well, if we want to code it, it would be that if we wanted to select age through the, its position as a column, we would select column number three by inputting three here. And once again, we see that our output is the same thing as before. It's only the age variable. However, usually you don't want to select just one variable. You want to select multiple ones. And how do you do that? Well, to select multiple variables, you're going to just put a comma between each variable that you want. So it's going to look something like this. Here, we select age, sex, and IgG results. Maybe because that's what we want for our analysis. If we run this, then we get a data frame which only has now still all our rows, 900, 971, but only three variables, which are age, sex, and IgG results. To test how much you've understood a little bit what we've been going over, it's time for you to do your first practice question. So. I'll read it over for you before I give you some time to do that. And it's, 
that I would like you to select the weight and the height variable in the Yaoundé data frame. Then in the same manner, I would like you to select by position, to, so to select the 16th and the 22nd column in the Yaoundé data frame. All right, take a pause and try it out. Okay, I hope the practice questions went well. Take your time in doing them and you need to do them because practice makes perfect. So don't forget, if you haven't done them yet, if you're already back, don't forget to do them at some point. So now, moving on to the next part of our lesson. For the next part, we are already going to use select extensively because we're going to work with a subset of our data. So here, we're going to work with Yao, which is a small part of Yaounde. And it has different variables, such as age, sex, education, occupation, if the person is a smoker, if the person is pregnant, um, the IgG results and the IgM results. And the reason is that it's easier to work with only a few variables rather than work with a huge data frame. Also for the operations and the manipulations, it makes your code a lot faster. So let's run and let's create our Yao. So ta-da, we see it's much smaller, only eight variables compared to what we initially had. And now, now that we have this, let's look at how we select different variables using different operators. So we'll start with the colon. It's really useful to select a range of consecutive variables. So what's important in that is the term consecutive. So consecutive variables, if we wanted, for example, to select all the variables between age and occupation in our data frame above, it would look something like this. So here we would run this little piece of code and we see that we now only have four variables, so all the ones between age and occupation in our data frame. You may also once again want to do this, but using the column numbers instead of the names. So what would this look like? It would look something like this. So you would select from column one all the way to column four. If we look at this, it yields the same result as previously, all the columns between column one, age, and column four, occupation. So now that you've seen your first operator, it's time for another small practice question. So it's time to, to try that out. So the question reads, with the Yaoundé data frame, select the columns between symptoms and sequela inclusive. So inclusive means that you also want to select symptoms and sequela. And I just want to bring your attention to one thing, it's that here we're talking about the Yaoundé data frame. So the whole data frame, not just the Yao subset that we just created. That's quite important because we didn't select sequela and symptoms and all the columns in between. So remember to use the Yaoundé data frame. Welcome back. I hope the practice question went well. Let's continue with our list of operators that allow us to fine tune how we select variables. So the next one on our list is how do you exclude columns? How do you drop columns? How do you just say, I don't want that variable, but I want all the other ones, things like this. Well, for that, we use the exclamation mark. So the exclamation mark negates a selection. Imagine, for example, that you would want to disregard age, then you would write the code as such with an exclamation point put right before your age variable. If we run this on our Yao, we now see that we have only seven columns and that the first one has become the variable sex because the age one has been dropped. So you can combine this with the previous operator that we have seen. So for example, imagine that now you do not want to select the first four columns, but you want to drop them. So here you would put an exclamation point in front of the range that you have defined with the colon. If we run this, we see that now we've only kept 
four variables, which is is smoker, is pregnant, IgG results, and IgM results. And we've dropped the first four columns of our data frame. But you might think, what if I want to drop columns that are not next to each other? Well, do not worry. This is also something you can do by combining the exclamation point and what we call the C function. So it allows you to give a list of the columns that you want to drop. What does this look like in the code? In the code, it looks like this. So we still have our exclamation point, which means we are dropping the columns. And this time, the columns we want to drop are age, sex, IgG results. Age and sex are next to each other, but the IgG result variable is all the way at the end of the data frame. Since we are putting all of these in the C function, we are telling that we want to drop age, sex, IgG results. Let's verify that this is what we obtain. So what we see here is indeed that we no longer have age and sex. Our data frame starts with highest education. And we see that we no longer have, at the end of our data set, the IgG results. So we've obtained what we wanted, a data frame, without these three variables. And now, let's try with a practice question. So, your next practice question is going to be that from the Yaoundé data frame, you want to remove all the columns between highest education and consultation. So once again, bringing your attention to the fact that this is happening in the Yaoundé data frame, not in the subset Yao. Okay, give it a try. So welcome back. I hope the practice question went well. Now we're going to look into some of the helper functions for select. So these helper functions, they've been created so that you have an easier time using select. And they allow you to select columns based on the patterns in the names of these columns. So this may seem a bit strange to you, so let's start with some very intuitive ones. And these would be the, ver the helper functions starts with and ends with. So it would be selecting columns that starts with a certain name or selecting columns that end with a certain word, for example. Let's give some examples. In our data set, what we can see is that we have several functions that start with is. So is pregnant, is smoker. If you wanted to select these functions, then we can use starts with is and we would select those two. We also have several variables that end with result. So IgG result, IgM result. So if we wanted to just have those antibody test results, then we could use the ends with helper function to select those directly. It's very useful and very intuitive to use, and it's very dependent on how the variables in your data frame are named. So let's run this code. This is our ends with result. So we see that we are selecting IgG result and IgM result using the helper function ends with. And this is our, so starts with result because both of these variables start with is. So this is really intuitive and it will really help you in selecting in an easy way. Now, what if the naming that is repeated in your variables is not at the start or the end? Well, this has also been addressed with the verb that is called contains. So contains is a helper function that helps select columns that are contained, that contain a certain string. So if we go back to our big data set, we see that the, there are many, many variables that contain the word drug, because these are the different drugs used to treat COVID-19. And if we want to select all of those columns, maybe to, to like uh, sort them out or see how many there are, how many different drugs, well, we would use the helper function contains. When we run this, we see that we have in total 11 different 
um, variables that are related to the different drugs used. So this is a very useful way, again, of selecting columns based on the naming of these columns in your data frame. Then, another helpful function is the one everything, which simply matches everything that has not yet been selected. How is this useful? Well, it's useful because it allows you to reorder easily your data frame. An example would be, imagine you want to put at the beginning of your data frame, the variable is pregnant and not age. Then you would write that you want to select is pregnant, so that variable first, and then you would put everything else behind it using the helper function everything. So this is a very neat way of bringing structurally to the front of your data frame a certain variable, such as is pregnant, which is now here in front of age and all the other ones. And what you can see is that the alternative to using everything just for the Yao subset that we have is to code out something like this. So if you look at this, this is okay because Yao only has a limited number of variables, but already if you wanted to code this out for the Yaounde data frame, the full thing, it would be really, really intense. So everything is a really useful helper function which you should think of if you want to reorder things or move things around. And then you can also combine these different helper functions together. So if we wanted to, we could combine the helper function ends with, with the helper function everything. And this would look like that. So you see that here we're going to select first the um, different columns that end with result. So these are our antibody tests, IgG results, IgM results, very, let's say, important data collected. And then we're going to put behind that everything else. So this could make sense, for example, if you want to highlight that we've collected this data and just to, to say that these are our main data collected elements. So what does this look like when we run the code? It looks like now in the big Yaounde data frame, we have the IgG results, IgM results first, and then we have all the other variables. So it highlights that we've collected this data, and that's usually a very good thing. So now that you've seen all of these different helper functions, I think it's time for some practice. So let me present what will be our practice for this section on the helper functions. So, our, our practice questions for now will be to select all columns in the Yaounde data frame that start with is. So normally, you should know how to do that. And our second one will be to move the columns that start with is to the beginning of the data frame. So, I know you can do it. Go for it. Welcome back for the last part of today's lesson. So now we are going to see how you change column names with rename or select. So renaming is as intuitive as on this image. You have the name of a variable and you want to change it. Maybe you want to change it because you want to make it more clear. Uh, maybe you want to change it because you realize that it just hasn't been named correctly. Um, or that it hasn't been named, that's also possible. Well, this is how you would go about it. So, for example, in our data, we may want to rename the age and the sex to indicate that we are at the level of a patient. So, we would rename it patient age and patient sex. If we run this, we would now see in our Yaounde data that we have no longer the age variable, but the patient age variable. We no longer have the sex variable, but the patient sex. So this has been an efficient renaming to indicate that we're working at the patient level. Now, something I just want to highlight is that you need to be careful how you write the rename verb. The syntax for it is that you rename by putting that the new name is equal to the old name. So this is something important because if you write it, 
the other way around, you should get an error, but you could also just mix up the way you're renaming, which is never good. So keep the structure in mind, rename, new name equals old name, and you'll be fine. And then the last thing that I want to show you in this lesson is simply how beautiful a verb select is, because you can already rename when you are selecting. So for example, imagine you want to select the age variable and the sex variable, but you want it to be clear that it's for patients. Well, you would do so by selecting, and at the same time that you select, you would write new name equals old name. So a combo of select and rename without having to even call the rename verb, which is very nice, very elegant. So there you go, you've done your selection and your renaming at the same time. We have a small data frame, two variables, with patient age and patient sex, ready to go for, through further data processing or maybe ready to be shown, ready to be shared, because it's clear and it has been wrangled. So thank you everyone for following this first lesson. I hope it helps you to see how intuitive and useful the Dipler verbs are. This is the first verb of a series of basic data wrangling verbs that I am really enthusiastic to present to you. So I hope to see you right away, or maybe tomorrow, in the next lesson about our next verb. See you soon. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.